Hi there, it's Nick. And hi from Martin. And today we're going to talk about we'll do an assessment of Cromwell Road property on, on Cromwell Road. It's um, number seven, Cromwell Road. And the thing about this property is we don't have a great deal of information on it, which is problematic. So I will share a screen and we'll just talk about it. All right, the short of it is the vendor refused to uh, to to give uh, access to video and footage. So therefore, I'm going to go through what this person says and we'll just talk about that. Then we'll work through the estate agency pictures and we go from there. And then, uh, yeah, so uh, let's do that. All right. And yeah, no pictures, fine, because it's tenanted. OK, I understand. And therefore, no desirability. So he says it's not good. I'd like to know why he says it's bad, considering it's such a central location. But we says streets. OK, now that's interesting. Uh, Martin will be looking at the flood data on this. Uh, this is a um, reservoir risk, but uh, only when, when the level of the, um, as we said, the insurance can cover. And this is that when uh, there is also flooding from rivers and there is reservoir risk. Mm. And he's saying that there's a mainline railway at the end of the road. Is that really a problem? We'll have a look on the maps and just see. No. I don't think it'll be a great issue. OK, so he's well looked after. That's good. Decorative condition is good. Yeah. Um, OK. Right. <laughs> OK, so this is kind of an issue. So one thing is somebody saying uh, it floods. The other is when the property had to be renovated, obviously, because of floods. <sighs> OK, well, that's annoying. Um, I'm going to talk to the agent about this and I'm going to do my. Do you can you disclose anything that would manifestly affect the sale of this property and see what they say about the flooding? I'd be quite curious because legally they are obliged to do that. All right, and an even a uh, damp issue, right? No, other, okay, fine. So no signs of damp. Uh, it's a very tidy property. That's why we were interested in it. But obviously the low price reflects the flooding issue. And off property, yeah. But okay. it's not in the high risk, so that's why I forget this property usually. Yeah, probably. but the fact is, we'll talk about this in a minute. So new boiler. Um, OK, so we don't know what the brickwork is like. I assume it's fine. We can look at other houses along the road. Is the yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with him on this. The thing about Doncaster is it is prone to flooding. But this is the root of the whole thing, the real question, which is the flood defense works. If they are decent and there's been no flooding recently, then that's good. So what he's saying is it got flooded in 2019. So therefore, if the flood defense work was done in between times, well, then that mitigates the risk. The problem we have is that the the it's a funny one because the agent who I spoke with before this call told me that he's got a number of offers, four offers. So I think he's had set seven, ten viewings. Let me just see because I did. Um, oh, I won't be able to find it. But anyway, he's had X. He's had a very high hit rate on on offers, and the the offers are somewhere in the region of well, they're all crowded around two hundred and ten thousand or one hundred and ten thousand pounds. 
the highest offer, the highest considered offer is somewhere around £115,000. And therefore, to have clear space between that person and the highest offer is it, you'd have to be in at 218. So one of the things we've got to look at is flood risk, obviously. And and it's either a yes or no if this flood risk is a serious issue, because there's no way you would reasonably pay for you, you. You wouldn't reasonably get insurance. So we've got to really study this flood stuff very carefully. Now, let's say that there is um, there is now a much lower risk of flooding in the area, then good. Then what I want to do as a negotiation play is make this very clear to the agent that we're worried about flooding and the off the offer is subject to searches showing that that we can get flood insurance on the property if the deal works. So that's kind of where I'm at overall with this thing. Uh, let's have a look at the condition. All right, it's just a bog standard tenanted property as we see. Nice garden, nice and flat. The thing, uh, we're going to look at the landscape in Doncaster and go into the flooding stuff in a minute, but okay, the the question is, is it well, the first question is what period it is, and I assume it's 1960s or 50s. Uh, but the Martin, issue, can you uh, no, they said this is between 90s and 30s, and I'm really surprised. Can you just check around some of the other properties nearby? Yes, and number 13 said 30s, 50s. Um, yeah, number I... nine, nine and seven said uh, that it's uh, 90s, 30s. So basically, right, okay. all properties. I, I think the 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 properties between nineties and thirties. I think late thirties. Okay, it's pro. Yeah, it's probably like early thirties, perhaps, by the sounds of it, or late twenties, early thirties. Yeah, 30s, but that's fine. The flooding, as they said, the insurance can make it really nice. The property. Yeah, but this is the downside that it's probably almost uninsurable unless the flood defences have been sorted out. Anyway, I'll, I'll just do my usual spiel about this place or just the, you know, the condition and what's going on with it. Right. OK, nice roof, good condition, same roof as next door, probably done in the 70s. I think this property has had a massive makeover in the 70s, in fact. And there, there's a couple of re 70s, early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, I would say. And that's a new kitchen. There's a particular style, which is this this style, the handleless style, as it were. And you can see here that's just a brand new kitchen. So nice. And that's all totally renewed. Very nice, very modern, very good. Tenanted, therefore, therefore uh, all compliant and all the certs and all that stuff. New wiring down here because those plugs are real high and that's a modern thing. So great. It's all good. But again, I'm really glad this Vuber person came back with this assessment because we wouldn't necessarily have caught this as early about the flooding. Uh, what would have likely happened is that had we made a big offer and all of that, conveyancing would have started, searches would have done then there would have been like, OK, you got to get insured, et cetera. And you would have found out about this issue. We collectively would have found about, out about this like six, six weeks from offer being accepted. But you're down the down the pan with some money. So anyway, it's looking great, this house. It's small, but it's just nicely proportioned and nicely done. New carpets. It's a really good property. And no wonder people are offering like crazy, but they don't know about the flooding risk. That's the issue. OK, so it's a young family. And the reason I say it's 70s, early 80s, by the way, for the renovation is because this is your classic early 80s um, decor. It's not avocado. So people kind of got over the avocado color <laughs> and they got into the shell shape. So I see this in loads of properties, this kind of clamshell thing going on. But still good. It's great. Yeah, it's a nice bathroom, very good condition. So condition wise, I would say it's very low risk. But that's not the action. Now I want to just go into the into this. And so he's saying it's a bad location. 
because of flood risk. So fine. And I assume what happened was the river flooded and went this way and caused flooding here. Uh, it's annoying. You know, one of the things about Doncaster is that it, it's got lovely stock. It's the right kind of price, but you've got to watch out for the flooding. And uh, with, OK, let's have a look at the capital gain and all of that stuff for now, and then we get on with the rest of it. And it's very low crime. Very quiet, nice area, nice road. Very People peaceful. are afraid of the flooding to make a crime there. Yeah. <laughs> well, this thing. So when Martin does his thing, I'm going to go and read up on flood defense work in Doncaster and just see what's going on as he talks about his. Yes, stuff. because we send offer on one property nearby, so we must check for those as well. Look, ghost road. Dun dun dun. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Actually, that's quite interesting. They've elevated this. You see that, that wall yeah. that's elevated for some reason. I wonder why. All right, anyway, let's not diss on the whole flooding things. We don't but really know. But the location yet. is nice, I suspect the yeah. flooding. Nice demographics, the right amount of private rented, decent private rented, just very nice work, middle, middle class area, very good. OK, on the growth, it's a typical Doncaster story. This is better because you're more central. So we, I did analyze a property that was up here somewhere and it was OK. But the further central you go, generally, the better it gets. And it's just. Yeah, it's just all fairly steady stuff tailed off last year. Um, it's got a long way below 2007 high, which is interesting around here. So it's kind of underbought in one sense. Again, let's just double double down on the flood information stuff. And overall, it's kind of keeping up in pace with inflation around here. So it's OK. Prices are rising. It's solid. You, you buy into an area like this, not because you want to play a hardcore capital gain game, it's because it's value and it's a good solid renter and it's a good way of preserving wealth for the long term because this area works and this house will will need minimal renovation for a very 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 long time it's just again let's check the flooding risk okay martin over to you so what i want to do is See what you've got to say about flooding risk. If we dig into that first and then you do the rest of your stuff and then I'll um, I'll go and do some research and just see what's going on. So basically this is medium risk river in the sea. And what this is, surface water uh, low risk and reservoir, we need to check. So basically for the reservoir, you can see the reservoir is here. Um, mm -hmm. There is a risk, high risk and you'll never have insurance. But for this when the there is also flooding from rivers. So, so if the re so we now yeah, can we have a look at the river flooding one because that's really the the issue. Here. Mm. Okay. So but usually I know that uh, yeah yeah I know usually when it's um it's a dark uh, blue then it's avoid but when it's usually it's like a light like medium then the insurance covered it so but yeah. you know that, that the, there was already floating it's going to cost so, to insure this that's the problem so unless this property is very high yielding then it's going to be it's going to cost which is the issue yeah, and, right. we send offer, and we send offer for one of these properties. We must check for that as well. I did. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did. Just check now, would you? Just out of interest. Sorry. Sorry. I know it's nothing to do with, with yeah, this it's property, here. Cetera, it's Yeah, here. I remember checking and I remember it was okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's because, fine. Yeah, I remember I did that check last night. Okay, good. All right. Well, this is why we do what we do because we are thorough and yeah, I, I, avoid because traps. usually I know what's happening. I didn't know because we are not locals from Doncaster. We don't know that the floating was there. Well, we so, would have picked this up actually because we look at the map. So in any event, we would go, ah, okay, that's a bit higher yeah. risk. 
Yeah, but high risk. Well, but, yeah, yeah, we didn't know there was a flood in 2019, but we would have said mm, that's not looking great, and so on. Yeah. Okay, Martin, can I let you? Can, could you? Uh, I'll just do my assessment. Would you be able to do your thing, and I'll just yeah. see. You. Yeah, of course, of course. So basically, uh, now I will speak about the location. The guy pointed out the um, the um, railway, but it's far away. It's not noisy. If the property was like first three houses, four, it's avoiding, but it's too far away. It's uh, if we measurement, it's like 150 meters. So it's enough a way to not have a noise because of so many houses on the road. As Nick pointed out, this for the floating for the walls. I just want to check how it is. You can see that when you go on the level, you can see that this is how you can have a lot of water here if it's if something happens. So here it's a high risk of uh, water, but these properties here are not so that's good. And I guess because the reservoir are here. This part is the reservoirs, so that's why maybe when the the rivers and the, a lot of rain and everything, all the water come in this place and maybe this place and this here. So uh, we need to double check if the insurance can cover. If can cover the insurance, then then it's a it's a good investing. But if it's, it cannot, there is definitely no go for this one. And um, about the location, it's really nice. It's like really central, really close to central Doncaster, really close to a lot of supermarkets, also gas station. So my consider is why somebody will build here a gas station if they know that there is a flood risk. So that's like a main, like a. Because yeah, it's a risk. Well, there'll be a limited flood risk, so. Yeah. So my consider is that like if there is a lot of high risk, they will not build a gas station here. So, but we need to double check again. So I, I guess these houses here will be a risk. This here, and for this here, I'm not sure. One hundred percent. So we need to double check. And about the there is some ex social house you can see, but not a lot. Some of them are ex social houses. So, and about the last sale is 2007-78k. Um, yeah, and I just want to see something to see if there is some transaction in the near future in the in the area. So what I will do, I will just check here. Mm, in 2018, you have sale. You have in 2019. Let's mix. And uh, expand the search just to see if there is some sale in the last five years. You have sales, you have sales, you have sales, you have sales 2022, 22. It has sales in a way, it have a flood risk, but they still have selling. So, hmm. Yeah, so there there are a couple of things going on uh, in the area. There is a bank in a place called Wheatley. So I can shall I share shall I share my screen, Martin? Yep. Okay. All right. I found this. So the first thing is that the um the, let me just get this up. Um, there's a place called Wheatley in Doncaster. And apparently there's a bank somewhere around here. Which has been repaired, so it is a two million pound repair. And. Somewhere around here, don't know exactly. But our location is somewhere, somewhere, uh, where is it again? Uh, on the left, oh, oh, far away. Uh, you can yeah. see, no, 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 left, left, more left. Yeah, you can right. see the, on the other side of the river, you can yeah. see the supermarket. Oh, it's around here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there was some flooding here and the 
Um, right, okay, so we've got some flooding and they've put in two million, they've done some fixing up and that's all good. So, so that's that, but the, just reading through the news in 2019, apparently what happened was there was a, a huge downpour, like a whole month's rain in one day, and that caused the flooding in Doncaster. And it was probably this kind of idea here, you know, not not especially deep flooding, but enough to cause problems. And yeah, there it is. So 400 homes, there you go, that's what happened. I, what do I think? I, uh, all right, the, let, the let's carry war. on and let's do the, let's do the numbers and all of the other stuff and We'll yeah. just look at the risk over reward and then we go from there. All right. Um, so uh, EPC yeah. is E, chunk for price, but this EPC is made 2020, 2013. So and after that, they do renovation. So if you make a new EPC, it will be C or D at least, because the condition looks perfect. Because I can see that similar property nearby, they are D or they are D or C. So I don't think there is any, any issue with the, as you can see, our property is seven, but you can see D, the A1 have C. So like it depends when the, um, they make a, they renovate it after the flooding 2019, the insurance company cover and they make it really nice. So there is a risk, but um, yeah. And about the rental market, Mm, I will talk and uh, was this I three or two beds? It's three. Three. Okay. I think. Wait, just double check. Um, it should be three. Yes, three. Okay. It's three bedrooms. Come on. So yeah, you can see the floor plan. So yeah, uh, three beds. So basically, for the three beds, you can see like uh, for for rent. But I will go with the lower um, area just because of the float flood risk. Well, uh, yeah. So uh, I yeah. think it can yeah, go yeah, up yeah, yeah. to. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because it's disruption. Yeah. So I. 750 will be the minimum rent and for the asking price or seven or even 650 will be the rent even mm -hmm. i will go for the same area just on the street level and usually that's not correct they don't have data for renting so but uh, I, I can have here the, the rental data i just need to find it this is for renting eight four five eight four five uh, for nine, sorry. And this one here is 650. And I want to see when is the rent. Oh, but the conditions are not good in this one. So that's why. Yeah. I here maybe no, uh, but okay, here it's half one. No. I think 750 will be the rent. At least 650. Mm. Okay, well, let's be conservative then. All right, okay, should let's... we do some numbers on this then? Yeah. Okay, here we go. And we're saying, I'm saying 118 is probably a, a number that you could buy. It needs negligible renovations so i'm going to just go a thousand pounds because really so what what's the rent 650 oh, six seven i think six seven five will be all that long okay peak growth i'm just, i'm not going to say a whole lot because i think this area has issues um and it will okay. not crash it cannot because how much of the price can drop in this year yeah yeah i agree okay so we're on the right side of the fence it will probably gain um, um, sorry, I'm just doing that, so I don't know. So anyway, it'll probably gain, uh, but this flooding thing is a is a real real problem. 
I. Is it worth we the must... risk? Uh, we need to call the insurance, some insurance company, and find out. Yeah. So this is where I'm now going to talk about that. So we had a, we have a client, and he was. Um, uh, yeah, let's do it that way. Yeah. So we have a client. He, he, we found a property for him in a reservoir risk area, and we figured reservoir risks like. How often do you hear about reservoirs collapsing? Well, they do happen very rarely, but they happen, but very rarely. And the, he had all sorts of issues getting insurance, and his broker basically messed up, couldn't find anything. And I remember I did a, I, I was prevailed upon, I did a whole lot of research, and I found. I don't know who it was. It was through oh through the agent. That's right. I talked to the agent. And said like you know any ideas here. So I found an insurer online, and they were prepared to accept the risk. The issue was it was limited company buy to let. So immediately you're in a in an odd category. It's a minority category, obviously, versus owner occupier. And the landlord insurance was. Typically, it's like 170, 180 pounds, something like that for, for bog standard, no risk landlord insurance. But he had to pay for, I'll call it 500 pounds. So let's say a 350 pound premium because of the reservoir risk. And I think, I think that if you, let's do the calcs because we can do them. All right, here we go. And I'm just going to add an extra column here. Oops. On, um, I'll add an extra column over here. Just so I can do some numbers. All right, so let's say that the insurance is 700 pounds, which would probably, I reckon it might be that. So as you know, with insurance, you just, you're thinking about probabilities all the time. And I'll call it 700. So equals that divided by 12 is 58 quid. And let's say let's say we're a bit more conservative. We say it's 900 pounds. So it's 75 quid. And therefore your actual rent return because you have to pay for this insurance. You're down to 6%. So is that worth it? That's a question. What do you think, Martin? If the insurance can cover, yes, it's good. But if it's, it cannot, definitely no. So because yeah, if the insurance, if you have something happen, the insurance will run away the property. So Mickey, the dog, he comes along and offers advice every so often. And his advice is that whilst he likes chasing the ball and running after the squirrels and so on and having pats, he also says that climate change is a real thing. And if if you assume that the climate is getting more and more um, more and more aggressive, let's say, that this is going to happen more and more often. And the catch with this is it's enormously disruptive for everybody. So for me, I'm I, I think it's a no. I wouldn't. Just mm -hmm. so I don't want to say that. Yeah. So yeah, it's our fault for no, no, that's not really. I think. Yeah. We could have checked prior for flood risk, um, but I but think usually we always check. But we always check like the if it's in medium, we know that it's covered by insurance in the reservoir, not high risk reservoir. It yeah. can easily cover by insurance. So I think there's a simple answer to this. Sorry, we're now talking between ourselves. There's a simple answer, which is I download all the raw data which we can get hold of and I'll just change some variables and add some new stuff into the system, which will cover this kind of risk. So yeah, we're, we've gone down the road a little bit, but hey, it's a whole lot better than getting into the fray, offering 120 grand, being offered the thing, then finding out the thing is just a, yeah. an annoyance to ensure. So there it is. Bit disappointing anyway let's just do the scores because hey we may as well yeah. and uh condition it's excellent uh, you don't show your screen right now oops that would help 
Okay, here we go. And excellent condition. Location, Martin. I think location it should be one because of the racing. Yeah. <laughs> and the area, nice area. Yeah. It's a good area. Crime is Crime. really low. Yeah. It's all like it's lovely. But this is why everyone's bidding like crazy on it, because they don't realize. It's demographics for nice demographics. Capital, Capital growth, growth eh, 3.7, it's yeah. all right. But actually, growth will actually be a lot lower because of the flood risk. So it's a three. Because you can have generally good capital growth in an area, but if you have bad spot, that's the black hole, as it were. And uh -uh. So this is a situation when somebody will like, like 7% yield. This is what is... Usually the properties with 7% yield is a risky. Yeah, they'll take that risk, but they won't know they're taking the risk because they won't consider flood risk properly until they... So what the likely outcome of this is that the people bidding probably don't quite know what they're doing. I suspect either we don't know what we're doing and we're being too risk averse or they don't know what they're doing and they're not being risk averse at all. And then they go down the line, they've spent some money on conveyancing surveys and all that kind of stuff. And they go, well, there's a high flood risk. Oh, you know what, I'll just push through and do it. But yeah, anyway, right, the yield. The yield oh, is very the good. Yeah, the yield is exceptional, but the risk is exceptional. So it gets a very low score, mainly because location is a, just terrible. I'm quite glad this works, this algorithm thing I built. It's a very simple algorithm, but it does work. And it, that score does reflect our opinion of the property, oddly enough. Yeah. So that's interesting. I need to fix the star rating because it's not working here. Um, but anyway, there it is. All right, wonderful. So thank you very much. I suppose you probably stopped watching the video with interest ages ago, but hey, the rest is an education. All right, well, thanks from Nick and... From Martin and... Happy investing in next one. Yeah. <laughs> okay.